Alrighty guys, we're back for some Gruel Beatdown, and this is a Murders at Karlov Manor Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked. Check out this top end, we got all four, Anzrag the Quake Moles, a 4 mana, 8 4, legendary creature, and when Anzrag becomes blocked, untap each creature you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. Oh my goodness, okay. Also has another ability tacked onto the bottom of this for some reason for three. Double red, double green. Anzrag must be blocked each combat if able. Now, I don't know how often we actually get seven mana to do that, but hey, it's on the card. You never know. We have other spicy things here on the top end. Axe Bane Ferox. This is a four mana, four, four. Death Touch with Haste and Ward. Collect Evidence four. And to collect Evidence four, exile cards with total mana value or or greater from your graveyard that might legitimately be difficult for the opponent especially early on in the game and we're going to do our dandiest to get these four drops out on turn three we have a whole bunch of ramp in our two mana spot like charming scoundrel to drop some treasures loam speaker here of course terrific uh ramp piece and then we also have ruby daring tracker in here too uh, one that we actually don't get to see too often, uh, surprisingly. I guess, realistically, we don't get to see Gruul too often either. But this is a 2 mana. 1, 2, with haste. Now you can tap it for a red, or you can tap it for a green. Whenever Ruby Daring Tracker attacks, while you control a creature with power 4 or greater, which is hopefully often in here, Ruby gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Though, potentially, if you get multiple combat phases, continuously buffing that Ruby. Sounds pretty good, man. Now, because this has haste and because it can tap for one mana, a bunch of one mana cards goes a long way in a ruby style deck, huh? Uh, give me one second here, guys. Gotta pause. Okay, so our one mana spot. We got four Commando Faces Kakazan. Have you guys seen this card yet? <laughs> we have four Ascendant Pack Leaders. Now, this is actually one we don't get to see too often. This is a one mana, two one, when it ETBs. Uh, or sorry, it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it if you control a permanent with mana value 4 or greater. Hopefully often. Like I said, we really want to see those 4 drops, huh? Now, whenever you cast a spell with mana value 4 or greater, you also put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Descendant Pack Leader. Being a 1 mana 2 1, though, honestly is enough for me. We also have Evolving Adaptive here as a 3 of. A 1 mana 0 0, and it enters the battlefield with an oil counter on it. Then it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each oil counter on it. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness than Evolving Adaptive, you put an oil counter on Evolving Adaptive. Pretty good, man. Kind of gets out of hand pretty fast. Hopefully, we're buffing this to a 3-3 easily in here. And then, of course, with our 4 mana cards, uh, potentially buffing it to a 4-4 four, four as well. Now, not a lot of removal packed in, but I do have three hard-hitting questions. This is a one mana sorcery speed, unfortunately, but honestly, if it was instant speed, this would be absolutely disgusting because just for one mana, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So it's not a fight spell, it's just that creature does that damage equal to its power and also hit planeswalkers too. Seems pretty decent, man. I'm interested to see how much it's actually going to do today. Interested to see if it's actually going to hit some planeswalkers too, right? So yeah. It looks good, man. Now, I kind of skipped over a card here in the two-mana spot. We have a single Breakout. This is a two-mana sorcery. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them. If that card has mana value two or less, which should be often, honestly, you may put it onto the battlefield and it gains haste until end of turn. If you didn't put the revealed card onto the battlefield this way, you put it into your hand instead. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Yeah, seems pretty good, dude. Just like... You could do things like grab a ruby and then tap the ruby and play like Kamano faces Kakazan. As a one of, do we actually want more of these? Maybe, but I don't know about for this build in particular. I guess we'll see how much it ends up doing. Now, ruby already has haste, so that's actually a bad example, but maybe like you break out a loam speaker, <laughs> give that haste. Then you can tap it down for one of your one mana cards. Now, that does seem pretty good, huh? All we have left are the three mana cards. We got four Reckless Storm Seekers. Okay, so hear me out. If for some reason you don't ramp into your four drops on turn three, then you get Storm Seeker down. And on turn four, you give these guys haste anyways, making sure you can actually swing in with them. And that's the same concept for Invigorating Hot Spring here. Oh, my apologies, guys. I got to pause again. 
Okay, no more distractions. Invigorating Hot Spring. This is a three mana enchantment. When it ETBs, it comes in with four plus one plus one counters on it. And modified creatures you control have haste. Okay. Now you remove a plus one plus one counter from Invigorating Hot Spring. You put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. And then you can activate that only as a sorcery and only once each turn, unfortunately. But that's just another great way to make sure we give haste to something important like the Anzrag. And then also there's other ways to actually modify creatures in here, of course, like the uh, Kumano Faces Kakazan second ability, Charming Scoundrel. Instead of going treasure, we could always go Wicked Roll onto something too. That modifies, right? So yeah, I like the one of uh, Hot Spring. We'll see how much it actually does today. Over here in the mana base, guys, of course, we got Huinders. We got Crucible of Defiance, opting for the Fast Land with Copperline Gorge, the Pain Land with Carplusion Forest, and a single Restless Ridgeline because the Restless Lands do go a long way for me. Hopefully, that doesn't slow us down uh, too much, though, since it comes in tapped. Honorable mentions, I thought about Tail Swipe, but yeah, like the instant speed and everything on Tail Swipe and like the plus one plus one seems great, but just like the fact that it's hard hitting question isn't like a fight spell, it just deals that damage, you know? I actually think it's going to do more than something like Tail Swipe, but the instant speed on Tail Swipe does prove itself worthy a lot of the time, so we'll see, we'll see, huh? Um, now, it's for Tail Swipe, it is choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control, and then if you cast this spell during your main phase, the creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of the turn, so if you end up using it as, like, sorcery speed, then your creature gets a little benefit, and then those creatures fight each other, so... I don't know, how often do we end up actually trading out our creatures with the Tail Swipe? Um, pretty often, actually, right? Especially if you're fighting something with Death Touch like Shieldred, so... What about Kami's Flare in here? Yeah, a lot of ways to actually modify creatures. Kami's Flare has always done a lot for me in the past, so it feels a little weird not at least having one of them in here. Thought about Beast Caller, and I thought about this new Sharp-Eyed Rookie as well. Seems like a pretty powerhouse of a card, but not this time around. It was actually hard to actually, like, fit the cards in that I wanted in, so. Also thought about Iconoclast. Seems a little bit underplayed. Could be a great budget trade-out for some of these, too, so something to consider for sure. Okay, guys, hopefully that's everything. Let's go ahead, hop into some Ranked, and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. Of course we do. A lot of people playing today. First day of the new set. We'll see if the opponents are bringing any new cards to the table. Okay, okay. Um, Yeah, I don't mind this hand, right? I wouldn't mind seeing some of our four drops, but only having six total in here. Eventually drawing into one is very possible. Could see like the breakout too. That could always help us find our four mana cards, even though... We don't get the fancy part of breakout. All right, we keep this, dude. I think it's good. Maybe we'll see this hard-hitting question uh, be an MVP this game or something. Okay, pack leader. I'm gonna set up that adaptive to buff the adaptive with the pack leader next turn. Was that a little bit of lag or was that the opponent holding something open? Looks like it's gonna be a cut down for turn one here. It is, in fact, a cut down. Now, the double pack leaders is not bad, but we could consider, like, scoundrel, treasure, pack leader. Nah, eh, that doesn't seem that great, does it? Oh, I wonder what they hit. The double hard-hitting questions makes it so that way we can take out this deep cavern bat and get back whatever we want. And again, since it's not a fight spell, too, yeah, they're not going to get the lifelink off of that. That was a good hit for the opponent, I'd say. Yeah, we could have played Charming Scoundrel, went Treasure, hard-hitting question, took out the bat. That was a good hit. Loom Speaker. Okay, I'll go Loom Speaker, because there's a chance of seeing one of our four drops off the top, right? Or a three drop, too. That would work. Lash Gorger. Yeah, that's probably... That's probably a problem. Mano, okay. Well. Ooh, tough decisions, guys. I say we take out the bat since we have two hard hitting questions, anyways. So we go like this with the Copper Line Gorge. Then we go Charming Scoundrel. Do I just go for all of it? Get as much on the board as possible? 
I guess so. I don't know though. So like treasure, I, I could save the treasure. Oh, seeing one of our four mana cards. Yeah, we didn't have we didn't have a land to play for the turn anyways. I don't know exactly what I was thinking there. I'll, I'll set up with Kamano then. That seems pretty good because Kamano flips a little sooner. Uh, next turn, we'll get extra counters with it too. Flesh Gorger gets through, gets them some lifelink, so... Yeah. Could be a problem. Ooh. That's a lot of extra... Oh, they're going to go for the minus anyways. Okay, I thought they were going to go plus two, plus two on Flesh Gorger. Swing. Gain five. But they were more concerned about our one one for the turn. And they can always do the plus two, plus two next turn too. So there's some mana. I, is that really... Um... We should probably take care of this Flesh Gorger. So I'll get Crucible now. Why is it... Why is the timer running down for the opponent? What What the crap? <laughs> What's happening, dude? Are we about to bug this game out or something? One, two. Um, dump the hand. Or swing for three. I guess dump the hand, right? So you are going to deal damage to you. We're going to say yes. We're going to take the three. Take action. But it's less life gain. And then we're going to take another one for the pack leader too. Down to 12. Yeah, this, this match feels a little laggy. And that was super weird. The opponent's timer running down there on our turn. Even though I was the one holding it up. Oh, the pack leader instantly dies to the minus one, minus one anyways. Yeah, I should have held it back and um, swung with the Loam Speaker. Okay, Storm Seeker. Oh, wow, Tainted Adversary. Opponent's deck list is sick so far, dude. That's one we don't get to see too often. That's a 3-4 right now, too. How do we get around that, man? One, I guess we don't, right? We buff this and see if they trade which i don't know if they trade because they're still at 23 yeah like they're they're sitting pretty good right now all right end turn and i need to see a little bit more i really shouldn't have played that second pack leader guys that was particularly bad yeah the minus one minus one coming from that uh, Life of Toshiro regardless. Ooh, Life of Toshiro again. What do they want to do here? Gain two? The minus one, minus one doesn't hit anything. They're going to go for a little bit of extra damage. Okay, swing wide. Oh. So they say take four. The Decade's dying anyways. We could block. Yeah, let's take the four. I don't know, man. If we see, if we see an Anzrag off the top, we, it could be just like a GG. Although they have that Death Touch to take it out for the first turn. Okay, land. Is it going to be the same concept for the turn? This time they have the trade with Memory of Toshiro into the pack leader. The Tainted Adversary. So like the the opponent's cards are doing a wonderful job holding us up here. Um. Really tough decisions. I don't want to accept that trade. So I'm just not going to. I'm just not going to swing. Yeah, like powering up a land, letting the adversary eat it. Like we have a beautiful setup. Oh, it gets to nighttime, which could be huge. That extra trample could go a long way. I do wonder if, yeah, they... Could just go plus two plus two onto the two two again because their last turn swing was really good okay they're gonna swing for four do we just like take the four risk seeing greatness off the top let's do it man down to four something terrific off the top of this deck okay storm seeker wow that is something terrific, isn't it? But they could easily just take all this damage. Five, that's 16 damage with the uh, Storm Seeker here. 
So we're going to have to keep... We're going to have to keep at least one thing back to survive next turn, but there's no guarantee that keeping that one thing is actually enough to survive. Three. Wait a minute. If we power up the Copper Line Gorge, which I should have powered up the uh, Replusion Forest instead, right? Blocker. Three there, right? Tough business, man. Tough business. Mainly because the three four just like blocks everything. Wait, how much is that? That's 10, 13, that's 18 damage. <laughs> that's really funny, man. But if we swing here, swing here, we accept some trades or they take 10 and then we still have enough blockers back to maybe not take the four. Yeah, let's just keep the rest of the blockers back, I suppose. They accept the trade into one of the, uh, one of the slashers, so we still have the other one to give haste potentially next turn. Still nighttime, which is huge for us. How do you guys feel about keeping this much back? Do you guys think I should have swung with a little bit more? It just kind of feels dangerous being at four when they had two creatures. If they didn't accept the trade, they could have taken the damage and potentially full swung anyways goes back to daytime and they stocked up their board nice nice and wide here with that swinging in the air okay <laughs> okay <laughs> we have to find a good balance I really don't know what the balance looks like swing swing they have that block there swing keep two back we're at four if they find spot removal if they find spot removal, it is what it is. They have no cards in hand, guys. If they top deck the one thing they need to remove one of our uh, blockers, then it is what it is, right? Because, like, we've had an incredible uphill battle here regardless. Okay. All right. They have four on the board. Uh, well, now... Okay. Yeah, now we had the block with the Gix regardless, and it looks like they might accept that draw. On the gigs too off the deep cavern back getting through this is tough business man maybe we need more four drops huh because some of those four drops may have been enough to push us all the way through especially one of those ands rags and admire hey not a bad hit off the gigs draw Let's see what they end up grabbing here oh hey new cards all right flash gorger the lifelink bro Oh no, mana! Oh no! I mean, I could power up the mana. They probably just take it. Flesh Gorger needs double blocked. We have to keep everything back. Yeah, since we're at three, we have to double block Flesh Gorger, chump block the Gix. That gets through. So it'll come down to. It'll come down to uh, what they see off the top because they just need a little bit of removal. Or a way to buff the Deep Cavern Bat, which they've proven they had because of the uh, Life of Toshiro, right? Plus two, plus two on the bat. Swing in the air, that's game. They go Gix for seven. They hit a Loam Speaker. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, we do have a great double block onto the Flesh Gorger, luckily. Um, oh, but like which ones though? Etching, I suppose? Yeah, I don't know if like Loam Speaker is the one we want to keep alive over Etching. Either way, the one that we, the one that's not the Storm Charge Slasher dies. End up gaining three, back up to 14. Oh, Anne's Rag, bro. Holy cow, man. There it is. I'm going for it because we're like dead next turn anyways, huh? Give that haste. Swing, full swing, go, go, go. So if they block the ends rag, we get an extra. <laughs> they're, they're forced to block both of our other things is the thing here. Because if they block the ends rag, well, 10 trample. 
they block the Anzrag, we get an extra combat, so that wins us the game anyway. So they're forced to trump the Storm Charge Slasher, trade with the Copper Line Gorge. Then they take 10, and we're kind of sort of alive for the turn, unless they find something to buff that bat. What a top deck, dude. That would have been huge earlier. Oh, man, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. They swing for one. Did we get there? Painted adversary. We got there, guys. Those uh, zombies can't block. Oh, man. Hey, uh, good game, opponent. We'll give trample to that Anzrag. We'll swing. What a time, huh? That's wild stuff. That that That's why we have four of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they do end up blocking the Anzrag just to see our creatures on tap, I suppose. Just to see, like, the new card to do the thing. What a time, dude. Holy cow. Like, the whole time, I'm just sitting there like... Uh, like it had to be heavily leaning towards the opponent. So hold on, I wanted to read this new card. Snarling Gorehound. One mana, one, one menace. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, surveil one. Okay, that's pretty cool. Really like the menace on here. Like menace on here with the life of Toshiro. Because you have the line, turn one, a Gorehound, turn two, buff it by two with the life and then you're swinging with a three three menace already which is actually relatively aggressive overall isn't it dude holy cow what what a game man <laughs> i'm gonna be thinking about that one uh in, in like the best ways possible like sometimes i do like a, a a crazy misclick and it just breaks my heart in two and then i think about that for like the next week of how how could i press the pass button or something like that and then sometimes we just have such a terrific game, such a tough uphill battle that we uh, pull back. Ah, oh, man, that was great. All right, opponent, what'd you bring into the table, buddy? Hopefully we get to see that Anzrag a little bit earlier this time around. Oh, in our opener, maybe? Turn three, Anzrag, An Anzrag? Actually really hard to say for some reason. This is a good hand. Even if they get rid of Ruby, we have uh, turn three Stormseeker and maybe a nice hasty Anzrag. Mountain from the opponent. Okay. Ruby Swing or Scoundrel. It's probably just... Well... Scoundrel guarantees the ramp... Because if they play with fire ruby, we have no one drop. I'm going to guarantee the ramp. And if it's like mono red, they might have a hard time actually hitting four. They might have a rough time removing this. This mole god. <laughs> oh, they have some planes over there though. More mana. I don't mind seeing it. At this point, I suppose it's better to have a nice surprise Anzrag next turn rather than them just dropping a get lost on it. If we go Ruby. Ruby into Storm Seeker. Hopefully, right? I mean, it, it must be removal. Seeker. Also, another game where it feels a little laggy. Like, things things definitely aren't being played out smoothly, and I don't think it's just because the opponent has something open. Lightning Helix. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guys. <laughs> that, that little bit of life gain from Lightning Helix seems like it's going to be so good all the time. Restoration. Boros Control? Oh, man. Boros control would be really good, huh? So no haste on the Anzrag, unfortunately. But it's probably still worth playing. Right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, swinging with it next turn is totally fine. Ruby gets that plus two, plus two. Bringing the opponent down to 17. Seeing all this mana, not... Terrific, but at least we'll be able to play Crucible without much interference. 
If they don't have removal for the Anzrag, then they're going to be in trouble in no time. They go for the ramp on the restoration rather than getting a free card or something. So that means they probably have another land to play. They have four open. So Wandering Emperor would be really bad against the Anzrag, right? Oh, get lost. Well, map tokens on our turn wouldn't be a bad thing, huh? Oh my! <laughs> a second Anzrag, totally fine. So, I guess we'll do one map onto... Ruby probably has a big enough target for now. Let's go on to Scoundrel. See what we see. It's land. It is a tapped land, too. Ew. All right. Well, we'll get the forest down, uh, get ready to play the Anzrag. Well, I guess it does affect the combat, so we do it before combat. Yeah, buffing the ruby. That sure does feel like extra spot removal, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to activate the other map token with the ruby's ability. Because I want to get that swing. Yeah, a little bit of lag. Like, I had to press that, like, three times down there at the bottom. The 3-4 now. So if it was instant speed spot removal, they did it a little bit too late for uh, to not take the extra two from the ruby. So luckily, we got the extra two through. Oh, just making it more expensive. We'll actually be able to recast it next turn uh, quite successfully. 3-4. Architect of Restoration is a terrific blocker. Pintorius. Oh, man. This is going to be a rough time, huh? Ooh. Axbane. Ooh. Well, they definitely have enough to actually pay the ward on this, but that's still really good, isn't it? And the death touch really good, too. Alright, so we're going to get the Axbane down. I'm going to try our dandiest to swing at that Quintorius. We'll block there, maybe. If we buff that. If we buff the Ruby. Let's see. Hopefully it's not land. Crap, it is land. Well, um, better get the tap land down. That's a pretty good double block for us, I would say. Getting Ruby up to 3-4. Let's see where they end up blocking, but I'm going all in at the Quintorius. How do you guys feel about it? Well, except for Scoundrel. I don't think that's worth the swing with the Scoundrel right now. I think that would make it so that way they block the Scoundrel and just chump the Axe Bane. They do go for the double block. So we hit Spirit first, right? Oh, they're both... No, they're not both spirits. Never mind. There we go. Death Touch will clean that up nicely. That was a good hit off the top. Unfortunately, they still have chump blockers here. Our, our three did hit the Quintorius, so now they don't have the minus three for the Discover four. But that possibility getting them more chump blockers. Another restoration. Dude, this is another match where I'm on the edge of my seat. I really want a way to give that Anzrag haste, but it costs so much right now anyways. Hard-hitting question. Okay. All right. Forest. Anzrag. <laughs> How do I want to do this? Hard-hitting question hits Planeswalkers. That's like, that's a big thing. Maybe they Double block the ruby? Maybe we save hard hitting question for something else? Chump chump. I think we still end up keeping the scoundrel back. Buff that up to 3 4. I remember this is sorcery speed, so. They do end up double blocking. Anything to keep the Quintorus alive is what they're thinking here, I suppose. 
It's a good trade because the ruby's been pretty good for us too. So now we should probably just go hard hitting question. Hit the Quintoris anyways, right? Probably. They might still have something to do here, guys, which should be very concerning. Okay, there we go. Quintoris off the board. They get the second ability on Restoration. So we'll see if they end up just ramping with that, or maybe they miss. Yeah, nothing. Okay, good. Okay, nothing. Okay. We do have the Anzrag ability, but they have no, no blockers. I can only imagine this is going to be like a Wandering Emperor turn, right? One, two, three, four. Let's go wide enough here. Wandering Emperor, yeah, that cleans that up really nicely. So let's go Wicked Roll, get as much damage as possible through. Crucible. We also could have done Crucible first. Played Scoundrel, got the card draw. But I feel like the Wicked Roll was the way to go. Okay. Nice wide board state. Let's get that swing. Wandering Emperor. All right. Well, we knew this was coming. Ansrag is out of this equation. Uh, they go back up to 15. And they end up taking 5 here down to 10. That was still a huge turn for us. And they've only gained five total this game. Like, yeah, the uh, everything else has been slowing us down significantly. So it's not just the life gain holding us up here. Hopefully we see more of our four drops, but we already saw two of them. There's only four remaining in the build. Anything with haste would be great, but like also this architect is going to be super rough to get around. Whoa, Arcane Bombardment hits the table, guys. Oh, no, land off the top. <laughs> they have a good block here. Well, first of all, we have to take the Wandering Emperor out of the equation regardless of their blocks, huh? Um, too good to be left alive. Arcane Bombardment is going to be so huge for them. Get a 1-1. One, one. Wandering Emperor. Oh, we could have swung one to face i didn't have to go full at i missed one damage guys hopefully it doesn't come down to one as i do believe that this is heavily leaning towards the opponent now anyways uh since we don't have an answer for the arcane bombardment or anything okay big score what did they hit a get lost oh man they go for their own stuff because uh map tokens they didn't want to give us any map tokens. They figure we only have one ones anyways. They might as well get some benefits off of their card. Opponent's deck is sick, dude. They keep a lightning helix on top. Yep, yep. Heavily leaning towards the opponent now, guys. But so was the last match. So, I mean, maybe. Map token. Lightning helix. Okay. Pack leader. Is there going to be any way through? No. I, I don't think so. But we'll play it out. I mean, we have chump blockers for days, but... Oh. Oh, my. They hit a big score with that. This is cool, man. Oh, they ditch a depopulate. They go get lost. They do start targeting some of our own stuff here. They get more in hand. Got devils. Ton of treasures. They can totally lightning helix on our turn. Okay, so we'll chump here, right? Take the four down to 11. Yeah, they can lightning helix on our turn to get all of the bombardment effects back. All right, pack leader. <laughs> yeah, the one mana cards, like, like the setup at this point uh, doesn't mean too much, as even if we see our best cards, we have no ways on this table to actually give them haste either. A scoundrel's not bad, though. He really isn't. Then we can go ahead, I guess, buff the pack leader so I can actually block one of the devils, too. 
Although they can just lightning helix the pack leader now instead of face. My original thought process was lightning helix face because they're so close to winning anyways. They hit big score. Oh, they hit the depopulate with it. Uh, that wasn't a great hit for them. Go get lost. And then I guess they just don't. They decline the depopulate. That's so much treasure, dude. Yeah, at this point, I guess they win with what's on the board. Very fun deck opponent. I really want them to go ahead and swing this out. Uh, but we'll see how long they take on our turn here. Always keep an eye. I'll keep my scoundrel. <laughs> keep my scoundrel as a chump blocker. Yeah, always keep an eye at the bottom of the video. We have chapters and then timestamps down in the description as well. I do like to let uh, opponents... Scoundrel, that's right. <laughs> Look at us go, guys. <laughs> Honestly, man, I think this could have gone either way. Uh, the Wandering Emperor came down right on time. Just super value Planeswalkers from the opponent. Oh, wow. Another Wandering Emperor, because why not? And they still have two open. If they want to go ahead and remove our Scoundrel. Oh, no, no two mana removal. It could also be as simple... Like, if we didn't, if they didn't have lethal on this board, right? Big score. Arcane Bombardment. Burn down the house. That's got to be it. That's got to be their, their full swing, right? Like, they're not going to keep going. Get lost. Man, what a home for Bombardment. I wonder how many of those they actually have in there, too. Because, like, Lightning Helix from the new set is so perfect for this, man. A hey, good game opponent. All right, we're 37 minutes in, but we're going to do our dandiest to go ahead and get one more game. Um, This is very much supposed to be an aggressive deck, so it is supposed to go a little faster. That being said, like I could have I could have conceded somewhere in the middle there where I figured like maybe maybe we were controlled enough, but eh, I don't know also fun to play it out just in case you never know we might get a crazy comeback like that first one against mono black in the meantime though what am i like wh what are the vibes i'm getting from this build so far yeah once you get over that hurdle it's very much that aggro style like you get too far into the mid game and it's going to be too late the opponent is just generating too much value from their engine where your engine is supposed to do all the things very very early So yeah, this is one that I would not mark as aggro slash mid-range at all. Adaptive Ruby pack leader is pretty wild. Double red open for the opponent. Ruby buffs adaptive. Pack leader does not buff adaptive, but we're still going to play it just for the sake of going wide. Instead of the swing there, I think that's totally worthwhile. Third red mana from the opponent. <laughs> the herds end. Oh no. I was not playing around a board wipe at all, guys. Dude, that's brutal stuff. I'm going to save the Stormseeker as a surprise. <laughs> Buff the adaptive. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> they hit that three for one a little bit. A little bit too well. Dinosaur. Oh. Wait, pass of the... Oh, oh, Cavern of Souls, I see. I see. Well. I suppose we'll do our best to slam as much damage through as possible. Because, like, we're, we're in big trouble now, dude. Wormseeker haste. Off snap. We got nine on the board still, though. The removal for the forest. Okay. I'm putting Connoisseur. I wonder why they went for the forest instead of the Stormseeker. They must have more in hand then. Another Brotherhood's End would just burn down the house, guys. Was it that simple? Was it as simple as two board wipes? Was there any great way to play around that? The first turn we could have swung with Ruby instead right? Ooh, 
Getting good draws, though. Um, if they... Okay, I guess we keep Loam Speaker back. Yeah, trying not to slam too many creatures onto the board and playing around board wipes, that could have helped. When you first see a bunch of just mountains and stuff, your first thought is, okay, mono red aggro. Okay, they chump quite effectively because uh, the Axbane Ferox does not have trample, unfortunately. So they do have chump blockers for days here. Ruby's pretty good, man. I don't mind this at all. I guess we'll go for it. I think we're in serious trouble. <laughs> this is a really good swing, though. It's going to be Murex for the turn. So they can chump the biggest things, but they only chump one of the biggest things, and they end up taking six there. Huh. Well, I suppose it might just be another board wipe then. And they had nothing else that turn, so they went Murex anyways, regardless of the board wipe. Guys, if we if we get there. Whoa, chaotic transformation? Dude, what's up with the opponent's builds today, huh? Pretty fun stuff. <laughs> Double trumpeting carnosaurs. Dude, how sick is this, man? Ooh, Brotherhood's End. What else did they hit with it? Ah, <gasps> burn down the house. Oh man. Oh, they go devils because they don't want to lose their connoisseur though. Swing with one. They are still playing it out pretty cautiously. What a time, dude. Holy cow. Actually comes out so they can chump there. We're going to die regardless. So let's just swing with that Ferox. That is a GG, man. Yeah, for a second, I kind of gained my hope back a little bit. And they definitely had the ward cost on the Ferox. Uh, pretty much the whole game because of the first burn down the house hit in the grave. Yeah, dude. The board wipes. That <laughs> was a rough time. So they get to collect evidence for here. They can just get rid of one of the burn down the houses. Obliterating bolt. I mean, they do... They do not have lethal on the board. Because we can uh, block two of them. Unless they had, like, another board wipe in hand. Then they could have full swung and let the devils die. So no blocks. We'll just see if they have lethal anyways. They do not. But hey, pack leader. <laughs> Unfortunately, these devils are terrific against this build right now, too. Being able to chump all this time. They just go two to face. We drop them the GGs. We try to drop them the GGs. If we fumble the controls while dropping the GGs. <laughs> All right, dude, opponent sick deck. What on earth, man? Those double connoisseurs. I'm assuming that's what the deck was set up to do. This is probably the only creature. And then they go for generating tokens and then get the chaotic transformation to hit the trumpeting connoisseur. That was so cool, man. Wow. Props to the opponent's builds today. Very cool things going on. Let's go ahead, go over the deck one more time. About 43 minutes in. Yep, just I just wanted to double check real quick. Okay. Here we are. Gruel Beatdown. Andrag the Quake Mole. So cool, dude. Huge target on his back. So worth the four, I would say, though. Huh? What do you guys think? Even this haste, like, with things, with Stormseeker. Stormseeker is just, like, a good creature in general. I think this was totally worthwhile in here. Didn't get to see the hot spring, unfortunately. Didn't get to see our breakout, so our one ofs just we didn't get to see today, unfortunately. That being said, I think it would totally still be worth the one ofs. Ruby was really good, huh? <laughs> didn't even come down to like buffing it a few times off of Andrag. It just like happens to be decent, especially when we have all these one mana cards too. Guys, let me know what would you add or take out down in the comments. And while you're down there, make sure you check out the description as well where we got that Discord link, as well as that Patreon link too if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. Either way guys, if you made it this far into the video, y'all are champions and I will see you in the next one.